Hi everyone, this is Dr. Cheryl Selman and welcome to Living a Totally Healthy Life on Total Health TV. Thank you for joining me today for another insightful and educational conversation. You may have been wondering, what does vitamin D have to do with this whole COVID virus story? Well, if you have been curious about this, then today is the time where you will get the entire explanation and really be inspired as to why vitamin D should be in everyone's protocol. So we're going to be talking about fighting off viruses with vitamin D. And my guest today is Jim Laval, who is a clinical pharmacist, board certified nutritionist, and author of more than 20 books and a fantastic authority on understanding the role of vitamin D for our overall health and well-being. And I'd like to welcome Jim Laval to the show today. So hello, Jim. Hi, how are you? I'm great, thank you. So, and thank you so much for being with us. You have such a wealth of wisdom and knowledge to share with us. And the vitamin D story is a really big story most people don't fully appreciate the role of vitamin D for our health. So today is all about exploring the world of vitamin D. And I guess the first place to begin is what is vitamin D? Yeah, so vitamin D is an essential nutrient. So that means it's something that our body needs in order to function and so there's two different kinds you, you and and you can order a, a lab test that will measure your vitamin d but it it's basically ergo uh and um and, and then uh calcrociferol so you so there's two different forms of vitamin d uh, what you're measuring ideally is you want to know, well, what, what's my total vitamin D status? So, you know, cholecalciferol, ergocalciferol, uh, and then there's an activated form, which, which uh, is also measured. And so, you know, vitamin D is essential nutrient used in over 4,000 reactions in your body. That I think people don't appreciate. And I know for me, I have very few people that come in with adequate vitamin D levels, even working in Southern California where they hear the sunshine is what makes vitamin D in your body. Uh, it, it, you know, strange enough, I sure don't see it. So I, I think we need to pay more attention to it, obviously, with what we're finding out now. And the interesting thing about vitamin D is that it's not a vitamin, even though it's been called a vitamin. So help us understand what vitamin D really is if it's not a vitamin. Well, you know, they, they, they call it a, pro, it's like a pro hormone, really. Uh, it's been, it's an important compound for your body to utilize. I don't know that if people want to know the structure of vitamin D, but basically central nutrient that is in a multitude of, of clinical, uh, pathways that are essential for everything from blood sugar to bone to, and especially to immune health, mental health, gut health. There's, you know, multiple of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, applications for vitamin D. So we've heard about vitamin D as being essential for our bones. And we are also told that the sun is a great source of vitamin D. But there's more to the story. There's more to the story about how we actually get adequate vitamin D and also more to the story than just for bones. As you said, 4,000 or so um, interactions and functions and biochemical responses in the body, which is amazing. Yeah, I mean, first of all, if you go out in the sun and uh, you're using sunblock, you're probably not gonna get much vitamin D. If you go out in the sun and sit in the sun, you come in, you jump in the shower, you soap up, you're not gonna get much vitamin D. Uh, so the first step is, is understanding that if you are going to have efficient uh, vitamin D, you know, metabolism through the sun, you, you kind of have to watch how you're getting it. I, I think most people, it's unrealistic given that a lot of people are wearing sunscreens or more sensitive to the sun, um, that they just don't get it. And I have to tell you, I've had plenty of people from Florida and California completely bronzed and they do not have enough vitamin D. So, 
you know, it's important to understand you should get it checked. I mean, obviously, uh, all the studies would show if you look at uh, a, a combination of studies that even though the minimum on a lab test is they range it between, you know, a value of 30 and 100 typically, really until you get up over 55, you don't see kind of the benefits you're looking for, for immune health or bone health, like gut health, all those kind of key things that vitamin D is uh, incredibly valuable for. So I, I think we're just in a, in a time where, where uh, people aren't getting enough and we understand how we can improve on it. So what you are sharing with us and what has been said during this time when we're concerned about what really will support our immune system, vitamin D is really a key player. It's often downplayed by media, but actually from a um, integrative, uh, you know, nutritionist, naturopathic, uh, point of view, vitamin D has always been essential and one of the first things we do to boost the immune system. Yeah, it is it, it, it is very important because it's involved in immune response, right? So, you know, there's been plenty of studies that show if you up your vitamin D at the first sign of a clue, uh, you get better in response, right? So that means your T killer cells, your natural killer cells get upregulated more efficiently with adequate vitamin D. I do want to mention, though, that vitamin D actually is a retinoic acid receptor and that and how it works. And what a lot of people don't realize is you got to have adequate vitamin A to work with vitamin D because vitamin A is, you know, what makes that retinoic acid receptor function. So there's a lot of people that take vitamin D. They don't see their blood levels go up. Could be a lot of reasons for that. But one of them that I find regularly is that they don't have enough vitamin A on board to go with it. Um, but, you know, one of the key things that we saw, right, in New York, they, they, there were some findings that people that had adequate vitamin D status uh, were much less, 10 times less likely to go on a ventilator than people that had inadequate vitamin D status. Uh, and I think that's that was an unbelievable statistic. And I think it's fantastic they're starting to look at that kind of data because it's finally going to give the value to essential nutrients like vitamin D that they deserve. Somehow or another, we've lost our way on understanding what essential nutrient means. And remember, vitamin D is really important in gut, in the gut health, because it helps with improving mucosal cell integrity. Why that's important is that you know seventy percent of your immune system is in your gut, and if the mucosal cells get get uh, in trouble, and you start to see you know leakage of proteins and peptides into your into your bloodstream, you create an inflammatory response. Well, why is that important? If you have a ground state inflammatory response, right? Like a, the equivalent of a low grade infection, your immune system is firing off what's called metaflammation or metabolic inflammation. That's going on at the baseline. When you do get hit with a challenge, whether it's a flu bug or whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's a, God forbid, an accident, your body is less in a position of metabolic reserve to be able to handle the crisis that you are being put under. And that's why it's so important to think about vitamin D as a, a key player, because it, it does have evidence that it supports immune function during you know battling flus and colds. Some of this preliminary evidence coming out about the value of it in our recent pandemic uh, and then the rich history of all of the studies that have shown its physiologic role in maintaining immune homeostasis or immune balance. When I think about vitamin D and the importance of vitamin D, I have to also think about all of those senior residents of nursing homes, the, yeah. the most vulnerable people. And you think about it, they're locked up inside all day long. They already have low vitamin D levels because they're probably not taking any supplementation. And we're just making them so susceptible to these conditions because we are not looking after one of the easiest and most affordable ways to support our immune health. Yeah, you know, when you think of, you know, vitamin D, a very inexpensive, right? I mean, you know, it's inexpensive to uh, take vitamin D, 
easy to take vitamin D. You don't have to do 10 capsules or anything like that. As little as one gel cap a day, or if you're using a liquid, there's various dosage forms of vitamin D. But, you know, it's easy to administer. And you brought up a perfect point. This is a big at-risk population uh, because they're indoors all the time and because they're already senior, right? And, uh, and we know as people age, it's more difficult for them to get the nutrients that they need so they don't absorb quite as well either. And, I'm, and, and once again, the food that they're getting in many nursing homes, I'm sure is good, but maybe not at the peak of nutrition value that we're looking for for our folks. And, and so I think, I mean, you look there and then you look at areas where there isn't a lot of sunshine half the year, New York. Uh, you look at Washington State, you look at Michigan. I mean, they're, the areas also kind of coincide a little bit for the most part, maybe other than L.A., where there's not, you know, sun isn't something that's there year round. You know, I remember having these battles with my mother's doctor because I, my mother, who uh, was in her 90s, and I would always supplement her with vitamin D. And the battle would be when her doctor said, oh my God, her vitamin D levels are too high when it was 80 because for the traditional medical doctor, if you're 30, it's okay. Right. So he would freak out because <clears throat> she's had her, her numbers were 80 and I'm saying, no, that's optimal. My mother never got the flu either. And, uh, I want you to talk about these numbers that are considered the reference range, but being in the reference range does not mean that you are optimally being protected. Well, I mean, the whole premise of what I've done when I wrote the Metabolic Code book and the book, Your Blood Never Lies, what, and, and then developing a cloud-based assessment of blood, there's a difference between looking at your blood test to look for a disease or a deficiency and looking at your blood test through the lens of, am I optimum? A great example of this is vitamin D. We, we, you know, you look when they, when they did a, a kind of a summary of all the, of the trials on vitamin D, basically, as I mentioned earlier, they found out that until you got to 55 on vitamin D, you really didn't confer the benefits that we were looking for. So that if you're down at 30, even though you're in the normal range, you're at the, the bottom barrel. And that means that you're not going to get that optimized benefit from that nutrient. Probably another good example of this, just so people understand it, blood sugar has a range of 65 to 99. Well, there was a study on 47,000 lives over a decade that, that ended up reporting that for every point over 84, you had a 6% risk of becoming a diabetic in the next decade. So if I had a 95 blood sugar, which would be normal, uh, I would, that would end up meaning I have a 60% risk of being a person diabetes in the next decade. So we have to look at lab values through the lens of what's going to optimize my health and optimize my chemistry and make me have the best chance at the vitality that I deserve, my best metabolic reserve, my best resiliency, my best durability, instead of, are you sick yet? So to your point, you know, docs are typically trained in, are you sick yet? And not, how are we going to dial you in and get you at your best and therefore look at optimized lab values within the range or the spectrum of that lab value? So what is the optimal range people should be shooting for when it comes to vitamin D? Well, I, I think some of it depends on where they're at and what they're doing, right? So, but I would say chronically, like you keeping your mom at 80, I, I continually tell people, get up over 55, between 55 and 80, you're probably in a good spot for your vitamin D level. So that brings us to the next important point. Many people say, well, I, I'm taking vitamin D. I take my vitamin D every day. I should be good. And 
I'm sure you say this and I say this. So how do you know that? <laughs> you know, I, let's test it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's you, you have to test it because there's people that don't absorb vitamin D as well. There are people that because of their vitamin A deficiency and kind of vitamin A kind of got a punch in the nose about 15 years ago where everybody thought it was bad for you. And then of course that study was deemed inappropriate and fraudulent and ended up going away, but we didn't re-educate people on the fact that vitamin A is also an essential nutrient uh, and, and that they work together. So if you remember, I Cheryl, you've been around, I've been around, I mean, 38 years in this business now it used to be you could find vitamin A and D together all the time. Now you don't. And so there's various reasons why someone's vitamin D, they could have gut permeability problems, right? They could have low thyroid, which reduces your absorption of nutrients by 50%. So there's a lot of reasons why if you're just taking a 5,000 unit of vitamin D a day, don't think that that makes it good. You, you, you really should get a blood test. Get tested for your vitamin D status. Understand where you're at and then work from there. I just have to say, because I spend a lot of time in Australia, which is one of the, uh, well, it's countries that has the most sunlight and one of the greatest levels of vitamin D deficiency because everyone has become sun phobic. So even when you go to the beaches, the kids have these bathing suits now that cover them up like, you know, 1920s from their ankles, you know, all the way up down to their wrists. You know, right. uh, slip, slop, slap is the motto down there. Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, so, so what happens is that the doctors, when you go for your annual blood work, they don't even include vitamin D in the testing anymore. I, I don't know what's going on in people's thinking because it's so essential. And if you are inside all the day, it's not only being sun phobic, but so many people spend so much of their lives indoors. Even when you're outdoors, you're shaded or sunscreen. Oh. We need education about this. I think it's one of the key things people really need to understand. And, I, and I'm going to go back to people don't understand essential nutrients. Like when I'll many times when I lecture, I'll say I'm lecturing on my a doctor will ask, well, what evidence do you have of this? Well, I guess 75 years of medical textbooks on, on vitamin D, you know, there's it's beyond, uh, gee, I, I have a new herb that came out and I only have three studies. I mean, we know the value. Think that it's, it, it really is tragic that we don't include uh, the routine making sure we're checking vitamin D. I would have to say that where I'm at in California, most even when uh, people come into our clinic uh, and they look at, we look at the labs that they bring in versus what we've ordered, uh, many times they have a vitamin D, uh, but at the same time, if you don't ask for it, many times it won't get done. And, you know, it's it, for me, it's very similar to not checking magnesium status or not checking your electrolyte status. It's a, it's a core nutrient your body needs to function and it should be tested for. And yes, there continues to be these basic needs for education about such an important nutrient, especially today you know, we got to be coming into a cold and flu season, right? And we're worrying about this layering effect of, you know, traditional flu bugs, cold bugs, and then, you know, rhinoviruses, influenza viruses, and then we add in COVID on top. You, you really want to start working on this now for your health. You know, start working today. You know, get a lab test. See what your vitamin D status is. Work on getting that vitamin D status up so that you are more resilient and have better, you know, better chances during cold and flu season, regardless of COVID-19, because guess what? A lot of people die in the elderly population due to colds and flu every year. It's the number five cause of death in the elderly. So this is an issue that is brought about by this pandemic awareness, but it has been going on forever. And we, since we've been tested, you know, looking at D and understanding it, and you bring up the point that a lot of senior citizens, A, they're not outdoors a lot, B, they're indoors most of the time, you know, and, and, and you know, covered up, and that their nutrition is typically poor. I mean, that's been reported and studied as well. So you got three big things that put them in a high-risk situation. 
Do you think it's possible to get adequate vitamin D from your diet alone? Wow, good question. I, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I've just seen so many people that it just doesn't work. First of all, let's just be honest. Even when we buy organic, there's variability in the in the quality of uh, f- of the food that we get. And so, and then there's the issue of absorption of those micronutrients. So I am a big believer in supplemental vitamin D because I want to assure that I'm going to get that number in the right position. So no, I don't believe most people will get vitamin D through their diet. And then there's the issue of the kind of vitamin D because it comes in different forms. And I have concern for people who take vitamin D in the capsule form because it's a fat soluble vitamin and that may be difficult for people to absorb. So you may be taking vitamin D, but not necessarily utilizing it. And let's talk about the different forms that vitamin D comes in, which ones you recommend. I mean, I, I use both. I mean, honestly, there's some people that just, you know, they're, they're gonna come in, they've got a cheap vitamin D that's fat soluble. They may absorb it, they may not. That's why I test them. I mean, obviously, I like some of the liquid preparations that have enhanced absorption. So they've come on the market over the last several years where they have vitamin D along with vitamin K2 that are added to it. But the liquid or more water-solubilized vitamin Ds are going to enhance the absorption. Cost goes up. So, you know, I always am uh, measuring, you know, cost versus efficacy and and what can we do i have people that take vitamin d capsules they do see their numbers go up and so i'm not going to be as um i would say as firm and saying look you have to do the water solubilized form i but but at the same time when values aren't going up they need to try something different because it's obvious that just taking more and more of the fat soluble vitamin d it probably isn't going to be the answer right I, I personally like mycelized vitamin D and I use it with vitamin K as well. And, and I've sure. had people who, who couldn't raise their numbers, Jim, on their vitamin D right. test. And when they start taking the mycelized or liquid form, they finally got up. Yeah. And, the, and, and, and just so people know what mycelized is, is mycelized is taking a lipid and kind of making it more dispersible in a fluid so that it's more easily absorbed. So when they create micelles, it ends up uh, actually enhancing the absorption in the intestine. I agree. I like it. I use it, but I use both. I mean, I got both sitting on my shelf, and uh, it really just depends. Once again, cost efficacy ratios for me, and I'm I'm, I'm going to go right to the to the liquid form, the water solubilized forms, which are mycelized. Uh, I'm going to go right to those as soon as I see a problem in absorption, or I may go to it right away if it's a bone density issue or a person who's immunocompromised. Right. So depending on the situation of the individual, I may also make that call just because I, you know, I want to get going on that absorption as quick as I can, because maybe they've got a gut permeability problem, their immune system's compromised, uh, and I just want to get to it right away. What is your recommendation for the amount of um, international units that people should be taking on a daily basis? Once again, I'm going to look at how much, how much are, how deficient are they? But typically, I'll have people do 5,000 units a day, and, and unless I see a number, if somebody comes back with a 16 and D, and believe it or not, in California, see that, which is incredibly low, I, I'm going to use 10,000 units a day the first 30 days, and then I'm going to, I'm going to cut it back to 5,000 units, and I'm going to see how it works. If it's a uh, someone who's uh, you know, has osteoporosis and their vitamin D is really low, I may extend that, you know, another month or two months until I get adequacy, which is, for me, adequacy is getting over 55. Uh, and uh, so that's generally how I do it. And what are your thoughts if someone is coming down with a, a flu or a cold, some sort of virus, and they want to take more of a therapeutic dose? What do you suggest 
to take. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a different, that's a different animal. So if you're going to follow kind of the literature, you would do, uh, about 50,000 units, at least for, uh, three to five days while you're, while you're experiencing cold and flu symptoms. Yeah, I think that's really important information to have because it's taking it as a daily support supplement. But then if you're coming down with something, you need to know how to utilize it so you can get the real benefit and boosting that immune system during those critical times. Um, That's right. And there's papers that support that. So, I mean, I'm just kind of dosing off of what the literature has stated is a, what you do during, a, you know, the increased risk during cold and flu. Great. And uh, the last question I have is how do you get tested if you don't have access to, uh, you know, a doctor that can do lab work? If you just, or you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole, you just want to check on your vitamin D. And if you, you know, know that you're low and you want to check it several months later and how much time between a, uh, the testing that shows a level and taking vitamin D, do you need to retest to see the results? Right. Okay. So a couple things. One, there's a variety of ways to get self test kits on the market today. I know that, uh, with the organic and natural association, we've sponsored having, uh, test kits available. And I know, uh, Cheryl, you, you can give some more, uh, information for them on that from our, from my standpoint, it's, uh, you know, you can test through a variety of self care tests. You can also even go up online and you can order your own labs from major laboratory providers as well. It's a little more inconvenient because the, the organic and natural association, uh, you actually could just do a finger stick. It's really easy. And you know, you get your results in a very short time. And I, typically what I like to do with people is say, you know what, just give it a couple months. And you may want to think about if you live in an area where it is, you know, dreary half the year and sunny half the year, at the very minimum, check your levels when you're in the dreary time. It can be a dramatic difference between the dreary, dreary time and the sunny time. And so it's really important to kind of get that, that delta between, you know, summer and, say, winter months. And, uh, and, and look, inexpensive test, easy to do, simple finger stick, and, and you've got your body level. Very easy. I do have one more question. If someone wants to boost their vitamin D levels by getting into the sun, what are the best hours and how long one should be exposed? Well, I think you'll hear a bunch of people clamoring at me on this one. I mean, I think that, um, first of all, 30 to 45 minutes of sun is, is what you get away with without a bunch of derm autologists coming at me. So I'd say, you know, 30 to 45 minutes in the sun is fine. Try to get it daily. Uh, you know, people have varying aspects when it can be, but I, I like afternoon sun. So from noon, uh, you know, afternoon sun is good. Or early afternoon uh, works great or late morning to early afternoon works great. Sometimes when we get into that late afternoon, if the sun is at its zenith, you can be more at risk for uh, getting a little bit of a sunburn. So that's the times I usually recommend. Great. Well, is there anything else that we haven't covered, Jim, that you think is important to share with our audience? I, I mean, I just want to reiterate that, you know, vitamin D as a pro-hormone, as something that is incredibly important in your body for 4,000 metabolic reactions, you should make sure you know your vitamin D status. Uh, because most of us today uh, that are working in this field realize we've got increasing numbers of people with GI problems, increasing numbers of people with blood sugar problems, uh, bone density issues are not going away. We've got three in 10 men now are at risk for osteoporosis. So it's not just a little gray haired uh, women's, women's problem anymore. So we have to be aware that there are these key nutrients that keep us out of harm's way. I think vitamin D is, you know, one of the kingpins. It's one of the most important things for us to really understand what's going on in our body and then optimize it so that we're able to maintain our health. Well, that's great advice. And I totally agree. You know, I've been 
beating the drum about vitamin D and the importance of testing and getting into optimal levels and getting a little sun. So this is such a great conversation, Jim. I hope it really inspires people to take action because especially now with our concern about viruses, this is one of the most powerful weapons we have in our arsenal for protecting ourselves against things of this nature. So thank you so much for your great work, for sharing this information, for helping to enlighten all of us. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really enjoyed the time. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, thank you all for watching this episode of Living a Totally Healthy Life on Total Health TV. If you like these conversations, please like us over on our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have many more fantastic conversations in the episodes that will be coming your way soon. So hope to see you on the next episode. Bye for now.